Hello friends, happy Wednesday. Hope your day is going great. Um, yes, um, let's continue on or um, do our verse of the day. If you are new to my page, I go live Monday through Friday and I do a small devotional slash the Bible study. Um, and apparently now that we're going live, I'm able to share pictures with you um, that I've taken and all that. So I'm gonna try to do that. Um, hopefully I don't mess up this live video. But um, I've been doing the verse a day from the YouVersion app. And um, I've mentioned here several times, but I actually took a picture of it on my phone and I wanna show you what it looks like to see. No, that's not it. So you know, let me see, right there. Ah, there we go. So you see on the screen that I just uh, circled it in green. That is how what the YouVersion app looks like, okay? Now I don't know how to take this down. <laughs> and then here is the verse of the day, which is found in Romans 1, verse 16. So I'm going to go ahead and read it. And after I'm done, then I'll click out of the picture. But this is just so you guys are able to see it. Um, maybe I should leave it up so you guys are able to see where we're at. If you guys tune in like halfway through the video or anything. Okay, so it says, um, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. So this is Paul writing to the Romans. That's why um, the, the name of the book is called Romans. So once, let me see, there we go. So there is the picture right there. Oh, and you're actually able to see it on the top, which is awesome. Wow, this is like amazing. Instagram's really like stepping it up. So um, I might just leave it up there so you guys are able to see and maybe just squint a little bit so you can see where we're at if you tune in a little late. Um, so yes, so Paul is writing this to the Romans. It's the very first chapter and he starts off the whole chapter, but pretty much just um, just like he did in the book of Philippians, um, which is like his usual format, just like greetings, how are, you know, this is Paul writing to you. Um, apparently the church is a church that he loves dearly, that he's um, hearing report that they're doing um, the things of the Lord the way they're supposed to. They're really living out their faith. Um, and he's, uh, yeah, saying, I, I, want, I want to go see you soon. Um, and uh, hopefully, the, you know, he's like, hopefully that happens. And then verse in 16, um, this verse that we're going to, that we talk about, the verse of the day, um, 16. And he just kind of squeezing it in there in his greetings. I think it's amazing because, again, we even see in the greetings that Paul does, um, or he has, you know, to these, uh, to the Romans, just truth, just amazing truth has so much depth in it, you know. Um, and so, yeah, so that's where the verse of day is found. So we're going to go ahead and read it and take, um, take it apart a bit. And I'm going to scooch my little phone because I have, like... I'm using the Bible Gateway um, website, and over here it has a lot of uh, content as far as just, um, um, what is it called, commentaries and all that. So I think it's amazing to have it. Um, and this one that I'm using, it's from the Reformation Study Bible by uh, Ligonier Ministries. Um, so yeah, let's talk about it. So the very first part of the verse says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. So I love how it says, I am not ashamed of the gospel. And this is something that Paul expresses to them. And it's something that we see in his life. He is absolutely not ashamed because um, just the, his boldness, okay? Um, the fact that he's left, like, he's left his hometown and was like pretty much a first missionary to really go out there and preach the gospel um, to to the nations and to other you know other towns and other cities around him. Um, so very boldly here saying I'm not ashamed. Um, and looking at the um, the commentary that I have in front of me, it says about that phrase I am not ashamed of the gospel. It says although the gospel is folly or like foolish to the culture. Paul sees his message as divine wisdom. And this is so true because, um, yeah, even nowadays, when we try to preach the gospel, and not just the gospel itself, but the gospel should really transcend everything that we're saying, everything that we do, um, the way that we think, things that we do, things that we don't do, things that we avoid, things that, you know, even in the culture that we're in right now, there's the gospel should really um, take over our mind and um, really you should see it in the way that we live our lives, that we are Christians. So it could be that maybe you are um, not put down, but look, yeah, look down upon because of the gospel, because you're a Christian. Um, but 
in your life and the things that you do every single day people see it and people look down on it people don't understand it people question it and uh, in essence if you are a christian you're really living out your faith um they are rejecting the gospel and rejecting christ you know and um this is what paul's saying here you know this message of the gospel is not a message of how do i say this it is a message of hope but in order for you to understand the message of hope you understand you need to understand um the get the bad news like the good news is the gospel right and we say oh it's the good news but you don't understand the good news until you understand the bad news and the bad news is you know that we are sinful that we have a one way ticket, you know, going straight to um, to hell, which is where God's wrath is. And if we don't understand that we are sinful, and if we don't understand that we need God, um, then we're not going to understand the real truth, right? And um, obviously, the world, you know, um, denies Jesus. The world does not accept Christ. It didn't accept Christ, so they were they're not going to accept us and the and the truth and the message that we portray. So. Um, yeah. Sorry, I just got kicked out of like my live video. I don't know why. <laughs> but anyways, our message is foolish to the world. It is foolish to say you are sinful, you need a savior, you are going to hell if you don't have Jesus. It is foolish. People don't understand it and it does not go with our culture. So here it says, although the gospel is foolish, you know what I'm saying, to the culture, Paul sees his message as divine wisdom and it is not, and he is not embarrassed by God's way of salvation, okay? Um... This is something that is for everybody. This this truth is, um, you know, for everybody to hear. And um, and the reason why we should not be embarrassed of it is because we all need it. We all have this cancer called sin, and we all need salvation. Okay, um, and we should not be ashamed. Just like Paul was not. He knew that he had the key to really um, letting people know the reason why they were here how they can obtain salvation, you know, how to diagnose them with the fact that they are sinful. And um, and this is truth and it is divine. And that's why he's like, I'm not ashamed of it. Even though it goes against what the culture states and what the culture says, um, I am not ashamed of it. And that is something that even now in 2018, we have to be okay with. That the gospel should transcend our thinking and should change the way that we act, the way that we talk, things that we do, things that we don't. And um, because of that, you know, we have to stay, stand firm. You know, people are not going to agree with it. Um, and that is okay because we're not doing it, you know what I'm saying, to please them. We're doing this because it's what God has called us to do. We are his plan A, his church. Um, and if we don't proclaim his truth, the Bible says that the rocks will. Um, so this is something that has to go hand in hand with us even now in 2018 to not be ashamed of the gospel. And we're going to see why. Um, so continue on, it says, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, okay? That power is something that only God can do, okay? Um, the regenerating... Uh, life-changing impact of the gospel word through the Holy Spirit is essential because of humanity's bondage to sin and to Satan and weakness and spiritually enable um, on account of sin, which means um, we are dead in our sins, okay? And for example, take somebody who is dead, all right? Um, for example, I am a nurse and I worked in the hospital for a while and um, there were times where my patients died, died right there on the bed. Um, I was a NICU nurse, so I worked with babies and unfortunately they did. They, some given their state and their medical state would die. And what would we do as professionals? We would get in there and do like, you know, compressions and we would give them, you know, um, support like respiratory wise. But the one thing that we would get is, uh, you know, how you see in the movies, like those paddles that you like, shh, and you just, and you like restart them. Um, yeah, we would have those machines to restart their heart. It's a pa this thing needed to be powerful, right? Because essentially this patient was dead, dead on the table. And we needed something that was just very, very powerfully to like zap them back to life, to really like, you know, restart their heart pretty much. And that is the power of the gospel. You know, the gospel is that, you know, those two paddles that you go and you do on somebody, you know what I'm saying, to, to bring them back. And the Holy Spirit is the one that does the work to bring them back because they are spiritually dead, to regenerate them, to bring them to life. Um, so that's why it's so important for us to not be ashamed because that is the power. It's like, for example, me being ashamed of like those paddles if my, my patient is dying. 
you know, like I shouldn't care what they care about the, about the paddles or about the, you know, the, the machine. I should just be like, hey, listen, this is going to revive you. So, you know, I don't care your opinion. I'm going to revive you right now. And that should be it for us. Like we shouldn't, you know, be ashamed of this power because ultimately it's used to regenerate them spiritually and to lead them to Christ. So again, not being ashamed of the gospel because it's the power, okay? Um, from God, it says, uh, for it's the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, all right? And just focusing on that word believes, all right? Um, it says here, salvation is unmerited, but it is not universally enjoyed. Faith re it re is required for it. So not everybody's gonna believe. Not everybody's gonna believe in the gospel. And um, that's why this power is so amazing because it is given to those who believe. You know what I'm saying? And you need faith. Because for me to sit, be sitting here and tell you, you know, you are sinful and you need Jesus, um, it's, how do I say this? Like we can't physically see God, right? I can't see him. Um, it's all by faith. And um, it is how, you know, us really understanding that God speaks to our spirit. And um, I don't know, just leaning in and like really listening to that and making that loud because we don't see him physically, you know. Um, we can touch him. We we can sometimes, a lot of times we can't audibly hear him. I know sometimes, sometimes people audibly hear God. I've never audibly heard God. Um, but that's why it takes faith because this is something that goes against anything that we are taught, anything that we are, um, yeah, uh, taught in society that we see so that's why it requires a lot of faith and um, this generating power of salvation is only um, it's offered to all but it's only for those who believe and that means that everybody's gonna believe so um, so that's why again we shouldn't be ashamed because it is it is salvation to to humans to us to sinners and the last thing that he says here um, in 18 again uh, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is a power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. And then um, Paul says, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. And me reading that, I'm like, what does that mean that he's just focusing on the Jew and not the Gentile? Well, um, the reason why is because in his ministry, he would go to synagogues. He would go to, um, you know, this the meetings of like the religious leaders and they were all Jewish people, you know. And in essence, Jesus came, he was the promised one for the Jewish people first because they were um, the, the people of God. They were the chosen people of God. So that way it's to them first because um, they were the ones who, you know, the, the where Jesus came from in the sense of his lineage, you know, so the son of Adam, the son of David. Um, that's where this, they were waiting the promised Messiah through that lineage, through that line. And um, so that's why it's like for the Jews first, because this is what's promised to them first. Not that they're better than us. No, they're not better than the Gentiles. But that is who um, who he was targeted to in that sense. Like they they were they knew about the Messiah. They knew he was coming. Prophets told the Jewish nation, "Hey, there's there's coming. There, a Messiah will come. A King will come. That's going to redeem all people. You know, redeem uh, God's uh, people to Himself. So that's why it says to the Jews first, because that is who He was going to. Um, and then He says to them first, because that's who you know the message was for, and to the Gentiles. Okay, because we know when Jesus came, because the Jews, you know, did not accept Christ and did not see Him as a Messiah. You know, what I'm saying um, other other people who were not Jewish did accept Jesus so that's why yes the Jews but also to the Gentiles God's love and God's you know salvation is offered to all people not just the Jews you know what I'm saying but um, the Greeks and the Romans and um, all those people who make up the Gentiles um, so that was just one verse in Romans the book of Romans is a book that is um, it, I have like a love-hate relationship with that book because I love it because it has so much meat, it has so much truth, but it's not like I hate it, but it's just, it's packed, meaning like I could, I remember going through this book, it took me like six months to go through just the book of Romans. There's so much in there and um, not that it's tiring, not that it's a pain, but it's, it's kind of frustrating because you're like, I'm still in chapter one, it's been like a month, what's going on? And um, that's why it's you feel like you're not going anywhere, but you really are because there's so much truth in each chapter and each verse. So um, for that reason, you know, the book of Romans is actually one of my favorite. I love it. 
um, but because it is packed with so much in it you can literally be in one verse for like a whole week um, but yeah guys so that was the verse of the day for today I loved using live now they have like this feature all the way in the bottom where I'm able to um, show you videos and show you pictures and I was able to show you the picture of uh, the version app that I use um, to give me all of these um, daily uh, uh, Bible verses that it pops up and I was able to show you maybe I can show you before I head out and I was able to show you the verse so we were able to read it together so that was pretty cool for some reason my life video um when I started it kicked me out and then I had to do another one so this is like part two um but anyways guys that was the verse of the day I am now uploading it not just uploading it on Facebook but I'm also uploading it on Instagram so this video will be up on Facebook if you want to see it as a post but also I'm going to upload it on my YouTube channel so check it out um I'll have like a little picture or a little um how do you say it uh, like a little screenshot where it says, you know, simple faith Bible study. So you're able to, to see it and I'll put the, um, the verse that I'm doing all the way in the top as a title. So you'll be, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. All right. That's about it guys. Have an amazing day. Love you guys. Let me show you really quick here. Um, that is the, where I get the verse of the day right there, the U version on Bible app. And this was the verse, which was Romans 1 All right, guys, that's about it. Have an amazing day. Love you and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.